I hope you got that. I hope you caught that. I apologize. <laughs> That was a good start. Yeah. 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 That was really good acting. Yeah. So yeah. Only actors can overact, over yeah. overreact, overreact to something. Small thing. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, but and our timing out. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us, Rebecca, Adrian Pang, as well as City K. I'm Hosan Leong. As hey, you don't know like that, right? Hey, but um, basically, we want to have a little chat about you know our craft of acting. So let's just start the ball rolling and ask, like, how would you, Rebecca, describe? your job? Uh, it's so hard to describe my job because I think as freelancers we carry so many jobs but if we're only talking about acting I would say that I'm a storyteller. A storyteller? Mm. Nice. Um, Adrian? Oh gosh. <laughs> um, I get paid to pretend to be other people. Ah, okay, good. Yes, Siti? Yes, it's very exciting because I get to lead different lives uh, every few months and it's very exciting. It's mm. a very fulfilling job. And I love doing what I do. Wonderful. But what, how did you get into it though, Siti? Um, auditions. <laughs> uh, yeah, auditions a lot when I started. Uh, I, well, I guess I watch like performances when I was in school and I'm just very intrigued by the whole life element, right? And I said that I would like to try to be on that stage also one day if possible. So yeah, I just started auditioning for roles and then... Your first role was when? It was for a school assembly program. That was my oh. very first acting job. Okay. Uh, it was for health promotion board. <laughs> and <laughs> it was on the subject of myopia because apparently during that period, all the kids cannot see properly. <laughs> so we have so to have kids, a show. This is, uh, see properly. Uh, this is uh, Singapore after all. Yeah. Uh, correct, because all the gadgets, right? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> we have to have a message about telling kids to make sure you after 30 minutes of like looking at like, you know, uh, the t television screen to mm. look up. Sounds wow. like a panto. Wow. That, yes, that's in a way. Like a some company mm. might do. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> 30 minutes pen too. <laughs> um, well, Adrian, amongst us, you are the most um, yes. experienced. <laughs> experienced. I'll take that. Okay. But how, because we were just <laughs> chatting earlier, right? I mean, you went away to London to do law. <laughs> mm. How did then acting come about? I mean, okay, your generation. <laughs> Most of them were lawyers. Yeah, I mean, that's a rite of passage in Singapore. You want to be an actor, you yeah. go get a law degree. Go get a law degree. Yeah, okay, correct. so how did that happen for you then? I mean, to be honest, um, similar to, to, to City, it, it was in school. I was 15. Oh. I discovered that if you go and do theatre, you can meet girls. And I'm still meeting girls. Yeah. You know, 35 years later. <laughs> yeah, 45 years later. <laughs> Wait, so that was in... That was in school, yes. What, in what, secondary what school. What play was that? Oh, gosh. It was... Um, I, I would have seen o it. Oliver. Oliver. Oliver at Victoria o Theatre. Correct, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe so. I watched it. You I must have been like... Four. Six. <laughs> I'm making you older, two years older than you claim to be. Um, but yeah, 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 so, yeah. so that, was, that, was, oh my God. that was a 15-year-old granddad to a 13-year-old grand, grandson. Okay. That family was messed up. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I remember Yu Bing was Fagin. Correct, yes, yes. Wow. yes. Wow. All the theatre legends together mm. on one stage in school. Um, and, and eventually, yes, I had to, to go away and to do law mm. to pay for my, my sins. <laughs> um, um, but in my final year, I had a panic attack and decided oh. uh, um, um, this just could not, was not the way forward. Okay. I uh, uh, decided that prancing around on stage and in front of a, a, a camera was mm. my calling. So let's go to you, Rebecca. I mean, coming into this profession, seeing all of us before you. <laughs> yeah, and you still want yeah, to do Yeah, why? Uh? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the funny thing is, I think I didn't really... I don't know how to answer that question. Had you always yeah. wanted to do this? The funny thing is, I didn't really start off with acting. Okay. My first love was always music. Oh. I always began as a singer first. So I've been singing for many years. Like Music was really my life. And you have a fantastic voice. Yeah. Yes, mm. sing, sing a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but yeah, music was always my solace for everything. Uh, and then it was only later on that acting came about. So one day, um, we were doing, uh, there were auditions in my school, and my school didn't even have a drama club. Mm -hmm. They literally were auditioning just so they could apply for SYF. Mm. Oh. So I auditioned with this bumbly old man mm. who was very, very cute, and we auditioned, no, no, not you. He not was cute, isn't it? He was like, he was, I think he was twice your age, he was almost 18. <laughs> uh, that what? was a compliment for you, like. <laughs> and then um, he was auditioning for King Lear. 
Hmm. And at that time, I really wasn't sure, but I told myself, I love the language, I'm going to try. And then I did it. And the whole time I was like, no, I suck, I'm terrible, I'm not going to make it. In the end, it turns out that he couldn't even find a male actor who was good enough to play the part. He changed the entire play to Queen Lear and wow. cast me in the title role. I see. Mm. Mm. And music was always my number one. Mm. But when it came to mm. acting, it was different. I could play a thousand different roles that I could never be when I'm myself. And I loved it. So speaking of roles then, how do you choose or decide what roles that you want to take? I mean, for example, City, you get offered so many roles all the time, be it stage, be it TV. How do you pick and choose what you want to do? Actually, to be honest, I don't really pick and choose my roles. I take whatever I could do, depending on my schedule, honestly. Because sometimes, even if it's like slightly out of my comfort zone, I want to take it on uh, as a challenge. Even if I find that, okay, maybe this is something that I'm not so used to. But mm. the reason why the director asked me is because I guess there's some kind of like trust in it, right? That the director believes that I could do. So I will take it on. You're talking about schedules, but what about, okay, let's say it goes against your beliefs your morals? Um, then that's when I feel that you need to find a director who allows for discussion to happen. Okay, mm. let's say... So if, you won't say no immediately? No, I will okay. make sure that, okay, if there's something that we can negotiate or if we can discuss to make sure that it's workable for the both of us, mm. that it makes both parties happy, mm. then yes, I would still love to do it. Right. Um, because, I mean, personally, like, like sometimes I've, ta been taken, I've taken roles on that my family get upset mm. with me for taking them on. Mm. And I'm like, but it's a job. Yeah. You know, so I, I don't know whether that, that, that goes with you. So for me, if yeah. I find like certain shows I do a bit controversial, mm. right? Then tell mm. my don't, family, don't, don't come. Don't, don't I don't come. tell them. <laughs> uh, uh, I do the same thing. Is it? Yeah. Just do. <laughs> just do. <laughs> <laughs> just do. Because yes. I want to do it, but I don't want them to see ah. it. I see. Okay. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that works, I suppose. <laughs> um, but Adrian, now that you've got Pangdemodium, Pangdemodium, does your the, your own plays that you guys want to do, own musicals that you guys want to do. Um, I guess that helps you in a way that you can pick and choose your roles. I've been very lucky to have been able to, to play some certain roles which Iconic I probably would, would not have had, yeah. had the chance to. You know, I've spent 30 years doing this and, and it's very hard to say no to work. Yeah. If you're a working actor, you just take yeah. what's offered you Absolutely. and try to do the best you can with it. I mean, look at the shit I've done on TV. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, so I know, I understand where you're coming from in the sense that there were some things that you just had to do because you had to do it. And then there are some things you do for the love of it, even though you're paid peanuts. Mm. <laughs> but you do it anyway. Um, Rebecca, you know, we talked about earlier about the acting and the experience that you need, right? I mean, can you just randomly walk onto uh, a set or onto a stage without any experience? What are your thoughts? I think it'd be very hard. Okay. I think it's one of those things that takes a lot, a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. So I never want to gatekeep and say that you must need training because training is very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. The only reason I was able to do a degree or a diploma in the arts was uh, because I got a scholarship. Mm. I would never have been able to afford it otherwise. I think there are dedicated mm. people I've met who don't have theatre training, who don't have um, a degree in theatre, but they've worked so hard on the job and they learn day in, day out. They learn from the people around them. They learn from the experience of being on set um, and they take all of that into account and they grow. For me, these people are also equally inspiring as people who have taken the hard path of deciding to go into school, come out and then decide to go into a profession in the arts in Singapore. Mm, I think that's what City has gone through, right? I mean, because you didn't go through training. Yeah. Mm. Everything was on the job. And I think you started your career with the necessary stage. Yes, by going through the Theatre for Youth Ensemble program for one year, mm -hmm. where it was actually also quite costly, but I also applied for scholarships. So yeah. like you said, I, after that, I make sure that with every job I get, I learn, I work very hard. Mm. I, no choice, lah, because that's the only choice you have, right? You mm. go through the tough route. I would say the real learning really happens on the job. Exactly. And so because in Singapore, we have many different theatre companies mm -hmm. in different languages mm -hmm. and different theatre companies, big or small, they have their own different disciplines, the way they do yeah. things differently. Mm -hmm. And you learn and you pick and you remember all these things mm -hmm. and you bring it with you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, there's so many um, genres of theatre that we have in the world. Do you have a favourite? 
Adrian? <laughs> Do I have a favorite? Yeah, uh, a favorite genre that you, you would like to, you know. A well paying one. <laughs> That's my favorite. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, in, in all seriousness, uh, uh, um, I think where I live is where I can really kind of dig deep and delve deep and, you know, lose myself and emerge from the, the, the void, mm. having, you know, created something that's as distant from me as, as I possibly can. Oh, okay. uh, uh, I've dabbled in forum theater and device theater and all that kind of stuff, but I think my, my, my happy place mm. is, is really text-based text -based? Um, mm -hmm. work. Okay. No, actually, what about I'm you? the same as well. Text based. Yeah, like for me, as the furthest away from me it is, the better. I think for me, okay, I think I'm gonna regret saying it. It's devising Device, theater. Right? I mean, but it's so hard, right? It's I hate so the hard. process because you're like, like <laughs> workshop, 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 then you improvise, improvise, improvise <laughs> for like three weeks, yeah. ten to six or two to ten. But mm. the results after that is very satisfying. Yeah, you know yeah. you've contributed a part of the script, a part of the process, and then you'll feel that as an actor that you're yeah. not just a tool to learn lines right. you know when the end result came out and you see some of the words or some of the things that you discussed and contributed during the process ended up being on the final stage mm. it's really quite shook uh. yeah. but to get there it's really like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, like it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process la. it's a long process yeah. that very you, long very long <laughs> you know but I, I get what you mean because that's where I think we both started out mm. we devised with Haresh and Elvin mm. and the necessary and stage, necessary stage yeah. and, and how I also was shocked when I, they throw you into the thing and go, they give you, this is a word, boom, nah, talk about it. You're like, huh? And then, but then as, as, as the months go by, you finally have a product yeah. that, that, you know, and off-center was one of the things that, I, that we did. Oh, it was yeah. devised, it was completely it was devised and over six months of work mm -hmm. and, and look where, what a wonderful play it is yeah, now. Yeah. Um, musicals, I mean, you're doing one this year, uh, Into the Woods. But, for, for me, Into the Woods resonates with me mm. very profoundly. I remember oh. when I played Jack in 1994, every night they were on, uh, uh, on stage during, that, during this part in the, in the story mm. where Jack, not to spoil us or anything, he is grieving mm. or something. It was a very real moment mm. for me. And, and I think as a piece, Into the Woods just has, is so rich with life lessons. Mm. You know, it's about family, it's about friendship, it's about good and evil action and consequence, all that kind of thing. It's, it's a very special piece to me. Well, let me, let me just continue a little bit more with you, Adrian, because I want to pick up on the fact that when you sit, when you act, it fills that void and you want to you, you do something that is not you, you said, like your character. How do, you, how do you find that? You just have to instinctually uh, find a way with every piece, I think. And inevitably, you draw on your own experiences yes. as, mm. as, a, as a person, you mm. know. Um, and that's why I think, you know, for, for young actors starting out, I mean, hell, you've hardly lived. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so trying to draw on your, mm. your, your relatively uh, little life experience mm. is, is, is hard. So I, 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 honestly, I think I, I just learn by just staying alive and, and, and living <laughs> um, and, and using that to feed your character you know, the works yeah. yeah and 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 Rebecca what about you because you know you you said you, you like to you know, really come on stage and people don't recognize you and you're like you know but how do you get there ah uh, there's so much inside of this i think it depends on how far the character is away from me but again i i agree that it's life experience you know i've cleaned kitchens for a living i've sold juice at at last time, got Prime Supermarket. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, now still got Prime Supermarket. Now still got Prime. My place. Yeah, it was, either it was Prime or Sing. So I can't remember. I used to sell Tropicana apple juice. <laughs> and every day I'd be like, hello, you want? And at eight hours, you know, I stood wow. there and I just sold juice. That is know. acting. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's acting. That's exactly. acting. Mm, life experience, la, as Adrian said. Mm. So then, speaking of life experience, then City, play ghost. How? <laughs> In three years in the life of death of land, you play a ghost. Go life experience, eh? I go to a seance uh -huh. and speak to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no lah, toy, 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 toy. I won't touch you, okay? okay. Mm. Uh, no lah. I mean, like it's just have fun and imagine lah, right? I mean, like that is the kind of characters I feel the actors should enjoy playing because, like, yeah. because there are no there are no boundaries, right? They are ghosts. Yeah, 
If I right. could make myself transparent, I would. But I cannot. I cannot. So, ask, very ask, visible. Ask makeup. Can you see me? <laughs> um, how are you going to physicalize it? The character. Have you thought about it yet? I won't be there. It's just okay. my voice every uh, night. Oh, really? Ah, good voice yeah. over. Yeah. Voice over. Mm -hmm. so, good gig. Yeah. 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 Very ah, good. Okay. Ah. Go on, yes. very good. Oh. Must watch. Huh? Then you'll know. I hate it. Very good. Um, yeah, for, 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 for accents and physicality and all to get into the character, how much research does one need to do? I don't know, like, like uh, Rebecca, for you, for example. I love like, accents. Okay. Love accents. But so for me, I, I learn accents the same way I learn music. I just listen. Mm. And especially the harder the, the accent, mm. the more exciting it is for me. I love a challenge. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of accents, I mean, Adrian in LKY, you, you had to. Yeah. You had to, right? I, mean, I had, had to. to, right? <laughs> and what? So you did a lot of research, is it? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's plenty of, of audio, mm. visual... Um, okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, you just listen to it enough and just yeah, try... Yeah. And just try hours and hours and hours yeah, of yeah, listening, Yeah, yeah, right? just try and, uh, try and internalize it. And then mm. singing in the accent is interesting. Though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then your next accent's work. <laughs> It's going to be German. As a German yeah, ghost. A, a, a German oh, ghost. German human. German human. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. At least, at least. How yeah. are you going to tackle that? So that will be a challenge uh, for me. Because for me, the last thing I want is to offend people who actually speak the language. Mm. Um, to not make, to not caricaturize the way people speak, right? Mm. Like, for example, when we think that, okay, a Malay person uh, sure can do Indonesian accent, but it's not true oh, because no. just in mm. Indonesia itself, there's so many so different many types accents. of accents depending on where you come from. Mm. So, for example, when I did Model Citizens, uh, I found Nora Samose who helped me mm. with the language. Because... Nora Samose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she said, okay, she's, I sat in front of her and oh. she taught me, okay, no, actually this is not. So I recorded, <laughs> listened to the way she speaks mm. and then I just like, you know, it's, it's a out of a rehearsal type mm. thing la, that we, people don't know that we do yeah. as actors. Right? People thought just like, oh, blocking, 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 but it's not. It's more than that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And actually, I love that you talk about physicality because I found that when I speak a different language or when I, when I speak in a different accent, I find that my body instantly changes. Yes. And I find that looking at the person and seeing how they move also helps with it, with the learning of it. So do you think warm-ups are important? Yeah. <laughs> no, but I do okay. like find some actors <laughs> quite amazing, you know, who like, mm. Mm, yeah, mic check, sound check, mm. bam, they go on stage there at like 150, I'm like, wow, powers, <laughs> yeah. Have so you, I cannot. You got, have you uh, worked with those people who are like always in care, never break out type? I want to slap that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, slap <laughs> out of it. I'm off, I'm off, I'm done. Bye-bye, yeah. go home. I agree with Rebecca that what I think about my character is how I could better it or what did I do right or wrong that I could improve on but I never bring traits of the character home with me. Mm. Yeah. Because then that also affects your mental well-being. I mean, like, for example, like, for Adrian, I asked ask you now, like, if you do heavy pieces and all that, how do you then divorce that from your real self? You just got to bear in mind uh, that your own mental well-being, you know, as a person is very, is very, very important. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as much as you want to invest in, in, in whatever role that you're playing, uh, to give it as much truth and authenticity uh, as, as, as possible. At the end of the day, you know, you've just got to look after yourself. And, and another role that I did with my, my older son, um, Zach, mm. about four years ago, um, called the Sun, the Sun yeah. um, where I played a father whose whose teenage boy was going through depression, and this father character did not understand what his son was going mm. through. So to play a dad, who I would like to think was the total opposite of certainly my own experience with yeah. my own son, and having that particular son play opposite me oh, wow. in that play, and saying really really hurtful things to him night after night. Not easy. No, yeah. It's not easy. Uh, so, and every night we would, Zach and I would just mm. hold each other's hands, give each other a hug, tell each other, yeah. you know, I love you, and then not speak to each other again for the next hour before we went on stage. Because once we were on stage, we were just mm. like, like that, you know, for the next two hours. That's not easy. 
you know, to go against everything you believe in yeah. to someone you love. To someone you love, especially. Yeah, on, on stage. Yeah, yeah. Actually, Adrian brought up a really important mm -hmm. point about, you know, going through difficult roles. Uh, the kind of support you get on stage and off or on set and off is very important. And whether you feel safe or not, because navigating a difficult role is hard enough. And if you feel like you don't have that support from the people you're acting with, it can be very difficult. Like I remember mm. I played an abused wife mm. uh, two, in two different series. But then I realized that when, on, on set here, in set A, it was very easy for me to navigate. Even though I was boring upon experiences in my own life, I had the support of a co-actor who really took care of me. Even though he was pummeling me uh, on set, right? He was beating me up. I never felt unsafe with him. And when I went home, I didn't carry it at all. But in this set, I tell you, I really felt afraid for my life. Wow. Like, and, and in the scene, also in between takes, I feel like, am I gonna get hurt? Am I gonna get hurt? I really was living that life. It wasn't acting anymore. But during rehearsals, how did that happen? It was tough because even though there was some sense of rehearsal, like when we went for the shot, he really went for it. And so that's why I feel difficult roles are one thing, but you have to feel very safe with the person you're acting. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a big team effort. Like, difficult mm -hmm. roles are not just one person. It's everybody. Actually, another, just a few years ago, we did a Pangdom Running show, Peter and the Starcatcher, about Peter Pan and pirates and fairies and all that kind of thing. And I was playing Black Stash, the, you know, the head pirate. So big, ridiculous, larger than life, uh, slapsticky comedy role. Um, that was possibly one of the more difficult roles for me to do because oh. I was going through a terrible depression oh during gosh, the time. I didn't realize that. So every night going on and switching on mm. that that switch to go hello, mm. you know, was oh. really took it out of me. And then that was one of those where where the moment you go off stage, you go, oh my gosh. Mm. So that that was physically, emotionally, possibly mm. more trying and more testing than, 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 a, than a deep, dark role for me. Um, wow. So, 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 <laughs> yeah, so we, we, you know, you, but you do okay. what you have to do. Mm. Okay, so now that I know the backstory, it's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, yeah, wow, okay. <laughs> mm. Were there any roles for you, City, that you have done that got you into a dark space and how did you mentally deal with it? Um, not got me into a dark space, but I... Um, had to go on stage three days after my dad passed away. Mm, yeah. And in that show, there were, there were talks about death as well. It was Model Citizens. We had to cancel the first two shows because I just couldn't go on stage and there were only three actors. So there's really no way where mm. the show could go on if I'm not in. Mm, but the, everyone was so supportive and understanding. And I'm like, okay, I will go on the third night. And yeah. I was doing okay mm -mm. until towards the end point where Karen Tan and I mm. had to have a one-to-one -one conversation and it's, it just like our goodbye parting scene like, where I left uh, her. The hug for me came coming from her, it mm. felt like it was the, I got you and it, oh. cha it changed. Yeah, but I mean like maybe the audience couldn't tell and uh, luckily that happened as I really was really about to end my scene. Mm. And in backstage, I just ah, wow. but you see, our audience don't know, right? Mm. The, what we go through personally. Mm. So it's hard, lah, because everybody the misconceptions people or people that you know that are outside the acting circle say, oh, you just go and do your thing when you on stage, mm. you just uh, entertain or whatever. I think the biggest misconception is all actors are extroverts. Ah. I hear that all the time. Like people are like, ah, you just go party lah, come just go clubbing ah. How come you actor ah? Then I'm like, actually it's not true. I just want to go home to my dog. No, I totally agree on that because people really think what they see on stage, mm. the wow, the very loud city, the very crazy, is what they will get when they see me on stage. Mm. So I get a few comments like, oh, you're quite quiet ah. And we laugh. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm only human. I just want to shut off. That one is just my job, you yeah. know? We're just, we're just lucky that what we do as a job is what we love lah, yeah. mm. you know? Yeah. Um, there's also the business side of it. Income tax, invoicing people and all that. How do you handle all that? I think right now I'm really grateful because I have representation. Okay. So I don't need to do any of that oh, anymore. Okay. So, but previously, there was a long time where I had to do all of this by myself. And I think all of you all know how hard it is. Like there was actually one payment I lost out because I forgot to invoice. Companies also don't actually tell you these things that sometimes they don't tell you that you need to invoice. They will give you a very nice payment terms, but they forgot to tell you that even though you sign a contract with them, you still need to invoice them. And if you don't invoice them, and if you don't invoice them, you don't, invoice them, you don't oh get paid. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah, so I've experienced that as well. I've lost out on a job, a, mm. quite a big job like a few years back. 
and I lost out on the income, but it was my what? fault. I what? should have checked also. What, and they got away with it? They got away with it. Oh, that's because the, the income, the, the payment terms are already over. What? So you really need to do your due diligence for and all of these the things contract. and read your contracts. Mm. And if you're not sure, you maybe get someone to help. Hand on heart, I think we, we are still quite behind mm. the slightly more developed industries around the world. Um, so, I mean, case in point, what Rekha was saying, it, 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 as, as, aspiring actors, emerging actors, young actors, they need to find means of uh, and resources to look after themselves. Things like insurance, yes, tax, insurance. all that kind of, they don't yeah. teach you that kind of stuff. Emergency savings. At, yeah. at, in drama school. Yeah. You know, they should teach it in they, all schools, yes. Yes. let alone drama school, and just so that people going into the workforce, they know how to yeah. uh, ensure themselves against being taken advantage of. For all the young actors out there who are watching, this is a business. All of us are running a business and we are the business owners of our craft. And I think that's important to know because people think, oh, so fun, go in and act, and earn money. Mm. Then there's so many things to think about. At the end of the day, you know, this is our means of making a living. Yeah. We're very lucky to be able to do it. Mm. We do it because we love it. And, you know, I'm very grateful that I, I'm, I, I'm able to, 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 to keep on doing it. Mm. What do you think the future of our art scene is going to be like? For, for the next gen. When I graduated school, there was no TikTok, there was none of these things. So the way people are looking at art has also changed. Mm, mm. So it's very hard to say. I think we have a tremendous amount of talents in mm. Singapore. So mm. I feel that when I started out in theatre, like the minority actors, I mm. feel we were lacking. But I'm very happy to see that over the years, there are more and more minority mm. uh, actors and actresses coming out, not necessarily only from art schools, but also um, when I found out that their interest began, all already in secondary school when they joined SYF and that is very um, heartening to hear. But you know sometimes I feel a bit helpless because I don't have my own theatre company, I'm not a director, I'm an actor. How then do I help yeah. these younger actors? Some of these kids have actually worked with them and I'm my mind is blown by how amazing they are. Mm. Like they're coming up with their own collectives, they are banding together, like we're going to make our own theatre company. Mm. I think that's, that's where you will get the separation because in Individuals like that who have the wherewithal yeah. and the initiative to create their own work, mm. not out of desperation, but just from a true mm. pra uh, passion uh, for the work, that's where they will find longevity mm. in, 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 in mm. the profession. Because it's a very unforgiving mm. uh, profession. Talent doesn't mean mm. work. Mm. Yeah. Um, and for someone who runs a theatre company, I, I Personally, I actually worry for the younger generation of yes. actors. Is there enough work? I feel like that too, is, Adrian. Is, is there really enough yeah. work? I mean, yeah. there's only so many jobs to go for that yeah. many yeah, absolutely. Um, I agree. available I agree. actors. So, but then for Pandemonium, um, the way forward? Well, I think the pandemic has, has oh. recalibrated people's recreational habits. Okay. Uh, it still remains a bit of a challenge to persuade people back into the theatre, people who used to be regular theatre goers, mm -hmm. now their regularity is not so regular. Mm. Um, occasional theatre goers now have probably mm. just decided to stay home and watch Netflix. Also things are being, uh, and the space is very crowded. Yeah. With a lot of things going yeah. on. Every week, Everywhere. there's events, yeah. la, like yeah. exhibitions, concerts. Yeah. And so people's people money is very now yeah. small because yeah, so they have to are pick. more selective yeah. to what they want to, where right. they want to spend that, that mm. money. For example, if you want a family of four to see Frozen, that's $800 already. Actually, sometimes I find it hard to even support my own friends in theatre. Because mm -hmm. I myself cannot afford the yeah. tickets for my fellow yeah. friends. Like Absolutely. I sometimes I message people and I'm like, hey, I really want to see you in this show, but your show damn expensive, yeah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah. we should set up a collective, right, for actors to, you know, I don't know. Have a special access pass. <laughs> a special pass. access pass. Friends, I don't know, friends. I just said, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure that all the audience, the theatres are full. <laughs> but I'm so glad that we've been able to sit down and chat about so-called the craft. You know, having to hear your personal stories coming out has been very heartwarming, especially for me. Thank you so much um, for, for sharing these drinks with us and chatting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. I'm going to drink my tea. Yeah, finally, okay, I thanks, bye. I want to find out still what is your dream role. I don't know. I always get stressed when I get, when I get asked this 